If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and read this question a couple of times. This one's a bit complex. We're told in the question that this fish experiences a net upward force, and as a result of that net upward force, it accelerates. And of course, there is a nice equation that rela relates the net upward force, or any net force for that matter, to an acceleration, and it's Newton's second law. So let's consider that equation. Now the mass was directly given in the question, it's 61 kilograms, so that's pretty easy. What's more challenging is to decide what the acceleration of this fish is. And so let's write down some given information. The initial and final velocities are pretty straightforward, those are stated in the question, but what's probably a little more challenging is to figure out the displacement of the fish as it breaks above the surface of the water. The question mentions that the fish breaks the surface until two-thirds of the fish's length has left the water. Let's try to draw a picture that represents that. Uh, in, indeed, it's a pretty sad picture. Now, we, we know the whole length of the fish is 1.5 meters, and if you take two-thirds of that length, if you take two-thirds and multiply it by 1.5 meters, you're going to find that the total displacement de uh, described in this picture is one meter. So basically, from here to here, is the displacement. And that's really what we need to use when calculating the acceleration. Now there's a formula that relates all these parameters to the acceleration. So let's look at that formula. This is right out of the textbook and we can certainly plug in our known values. And then if we solve for the acceleration, we should get 13 and a half meters per second squared. If you have any questions about how the algebra work there, please let me know in the comments. So now this question is becoming relatively easy. We have the acceleration calculated and we have the mass of the fish. Let's turn to the net force next. Now to get a look at the net force, we're going to need to draw a free body diagram of the fish. So let's represent the fish as a point and then let's add the forces that are acting on the fish. Now of course there's the downward force of gravity. There is the upward force F that's exerted by the tail fin. So there should be an upward force pointing up. And maybe what was a little confusing is that it said that there was a downward drag. But then later in the question, it says that assume that the drag force disappears as soon as the fish, uh, the fish's head breaks the surface. So I really think that the key to the problem was to ignore the drag force. Just as the fish's head We'll try to draw this fish one more time. Just as the fish's head begins to break, they're saying that the drag force disappears. So we can neglect it. We can neglect that force. So these are really the only two forces. We can plug them into the net force. We would have the positive force F, and then mg is, is pointing downward, so that would make it negative. So we would have minus mg equals ma. So why don't we go ahead and plug in the known values. Recall that we figured out the acceleration. The mass was given to us, so we can plug the mass in twice, and then g, of course, is 9.8, so let's do that. And then a little algebra here allows us to solve.